Hi there, this is Ronnie coming at you with another video. Part 3 of Savage Worlds. Since my original two Savage Worlds, I have been on a little bit of a spending spree and gotten a few more uh, campaign settings. So I thought I would share them with you, the Golius public. Uh, again, I well, I haven't actually used any of them, but they all intrigued me for one reason or another. And I got into a bit of a completist kick and I was determined to have them. And they were nicely priced, uh, mostly through drive through I am missing one which I've got coming, which is Achtung Cthulhu. Uh, I have that on order at my friendly local gaming store and hopefully I will have that soon. But for the moment, uh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do the sci-fi ones first. Um, simply because sci-fi. Right, I mentioned this in the other book, in the other one, which is Double Spiral War. My reason for picking on this is it's not so much low tech, it's a bit more hard sci-fi than uh, any of the ones I've got. And it, when I was reading through it, it gave me that real sense of um, Traveller. Uh, and I've always been kind of looking for a sort of sweet spot game. And again, it gives me more options for um, Last Parsec and another one which I'm about to mention. But I'm very happy to have that. It's a bit thin on the ground, but it's enough there to get in. So I'm happy to have it. This, on the other hand, is bloody huge. Uh, this is Mutant Chronicles. Um, third edition, this is the Savage Worlds version. This is huge. This is cyberpunk in space meets horror. Um, technology is advanced in some areas, it's not quite as advanced in others. Uh, it's got a real mishmash to it. Um, it's a bit more involved than a lot of the Savage World settings in that there's a lot more going on and in that respect it shares a lot with the the other two main sort of cyberpunk systems I have which are Interface Zero and Nova Praxis and I like this, I really want to run this I read through it and went, oh yeah, gotta have that um, so I'm looking forward to running that um, that might actually turn up my friend the local gaming store. This one caught my eye, which is Zombie Squad, which um, the name makes it sound like it's a, a horror game, and it's not. Uh, Zombie Squad refers to uh, people who have been convicted of, of crimes who have been pronounced legally dead. And the reason they pronounced legally dead is because they've been executed by the state, but in fact they've been uh, press ganged into working for um, government agencies. Uh, in that respect, it kind of reminds me of uh, the Dirty Dozen uh, or. Um, films or uh, TV shows like Nikita where you've, you've been declared legally dead and now you're working for a government agency. This is really high action. It assumes in character creation that you have a military background which is why you've been uh, declared legally dead and now being used and because you're all dead men walking essentially. Uh, which is where the uh, term zombie squad comes from and I like this idea I think it's a really good um, notion I think it'd be great for one shots uh, which is mainly the reason I bought it one shots are smaller campaigns um, I've had my eye on this for a while and I finally got it because someone was selling it on Amazon for a very nice price so I got hold of it. I already had the, the PDF. Um, 
this is very separate from uh, less parsec but again it gives me more options um, I could run that on its own actually and had I had this this is a second edition and had this come out first I might not have bought last parsec for that matter I might not have bought the sci-fi companion but to be honest I'm, I'm a completist so yeah I probably would have but it's not bad there's plenty there uh, it's well worth a look if you if if you have savage worlds and you're looking for a a good generic sci-fi uh setting and because the sci-fi companion is becoming more and more difficult to find which means you can't use last parsec uh this is a good alternative so that's sci-fi over with um sort of Urban fantasy. There are a couple. This intrigued the hell out of me. This um, takes urban fantasy right down to street level. Uh, this is Fae Nightmares. Essentially, you are humans who have been awoken by the Fae, either because um, you just naturally can see the Fae world, uh, or you've been given a gift by a member of the Fae or you know that there's like four distinct types of people who have been awoken by the Fae so you're no longer really fully human anymore but you're not Fae either you straddle both worlds but belong to neither fully uh, hence why you are referred to as a nightmare and you are involved there are two courts it's set in the, the, the city of Arden and you represent the court of roses which like to use diplomacy and subterfuge and then there's a court of swords which are far more militaristic um, and there's a couple of other uh, societies and essentially you're dealing with fair politics and um, control of the city and it's just it's an intriguing uh, idea and I really like the, the sound of it so I went for it uh, this intrigued the hell out of me this is amethyst untamed the idea that uh, we're sort of in our modern society a sort of slightly sort of near future society but the a fantasy realm has encroached on our reality and so our re real world now is a mix of our own technical technological reality and fantasy realms and technology doesn't work in fantasy realms and magic doesn't work in techno technological realms um it's an interesting and intriguing this is the the player's guide there is a world's guide which i have as well um and i really like the idea of this i want to run this i really do i just think this will be bloody brilliant um moving on to uh steampunk I had my eye on this for a while, which is the Cabaros Club. This is a Savage Worlds edition. There is, I think there's one for the OGL, there's certainly one for Fate. And this is essentially superheroes in Victorian London. You're all member of the Cabaros Club, you are a sort of society of superpowered people who are defending society from uh, forces of darkness and so on. I love the idea of it um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really up for trying this the only thing about it is is I think this I think I may be wrong but I think this has been written with the first edition of the superpowers companion in mind as opposed to the second it just requires a little tweak from me to really make it work and I, I I'm, I'm, I'm attempted 
Yeah. I want to run it. And I think my players... I, I've already mentioned this to my players and they're really up for it. So, yeah, I think this will get some play. Uh, Gaslight, which is... I had the second edition, which was terrible. There were typos aplenty. It was bloody awful. Uh, and there wasn't really much information in it. It was just really thin book, which uh, bugger all in it. Um, this is a welcome extension. I can add stuff from this to Widening Gear and Kerberos Club and Clockwork Dreams and I've got a wealth of information now to run games using the Savage World setting for uh, Victorian set steampunk games so I'm in I'm absolutely in my element Fantasy sort of this is a strange one, Children of the Apocalypse, which is a post-apocalyptic game. As in, there's been, you know, huge apocalypse. And huge apocalypse has came and gone, and society has reverted to almost a sort of medieval uh, stage with fantastical elements so what you have here is a fantasy game set in our future but with all the the, the tropes of fantasy it's such an intriguing notion uh, that I had to get it and it was pretty cheap so you know I couldn't resist I have been talking about getting some dark fantasy games for a while and this one has been on my radar for ages, which is a cast um, where you're sort of witch finders. Uh, where you are sort of, you've been cursed and you have powers, but you fight against um, evil. Uh, more dark, more horror of a soul again. It has, there are elements of it when I was reading through it that gave me that feel of Shadows of Esterin, which just grabbed me, so I went, yeah, yeah, got to have that. When I did my video on the Ultimate Guides, I, I, I said I had Renaissance France, and um, I finally found this for a decent price, which is all for one, uh, Régime Diab Diabolique, which is essentially Musketeers, with monsters. What's not to love? <laughs> There's not much needed says. Musketeers, monsters, magic. Hmm. All the M's. Uh, again, some dark fantasy with ancient world. I'm really, really, really loving Mystical Thrones products, of which I've got a fair flipping amount now. Um, you know, it's good. I've got the the, the best jury for this as well. Uh, it allows for a bit more of a a, a sort of salt and sorcery vibe, uh, as opposed to high fantasy. Uh, something else I'll come to in a minute. Um, but yeah, really, really pleased to have this. Buccaneer for Hell and High Water. I this this has come out recently, and look at the thickness of that. There's so much background, and uh, it's gorgeous full color pages as well. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I do have Pirates and Privateers, which is one of the ultimate guides. Uh, I can add that stuff to this. Um, it's it's pirates, there are fantasy elements to it. It gives me a replacement for Pirates of the Spanish Main, which was a fair, perfectly good um, fantasy pirate setting uh, as it was. Um, but I gave that one to my daughter because her and her boyfriend um, love uh, uh, pirates. 
and um, this this came up for a nice price and it seemed a decent replacement and I'm not regretting it. Um, this one is not available print on demand. I had to get this printed from uh, printbypdf.com. This is Primeval Fuel, which is a low, real salt and sorcery setting. This one, uh, which I kind of, I wanted a good sort of uh, setting. The only thing I'll say is that. Um, primary to uh, print my PDF uh, haven't really sized it up very well so some of the text is hard to read I might have to look at maybe replacing this with an A4 size version just to make it workable but I certainly want to use it because there's some good stuff in here uh, nice dark good you know anyone want to run Conan this is it modern I have some modern wire the, the, the only thing I was really lacking was modern and I have some uh, a couple of moderns couple of modern fantasy urban fantasy um, that's a horror this is Wellstone City which is very much film noir sort of modern day film noir. I've got another one which is pretty close to it as well. Um, I like the idea of, of having a city no fantasy elements, no horror elements, just straight up uh, action if I want to do something uh, sort of John Woo, Tarantino esque you know got it right here uh, happy to have this and it was really cheap um, I bought the uh, ultimate guides conspiracies which gives me options but this gives me some focus agents of Gaia is essentially you are agents for a uh, special interest that fight against horror it's more um, secret society fighting the forces of darkness than the one that I'm about to mention um, it's more akin you could add this to sort of basic horror elements and you would have something similar to uh, the save organization from chill um, so for that reason for me it was worth getting so I'm happy to have it Yeah, I did mention about the fact that I was maybe going to get this next, when I did my last video, which is Agents of Oblivion. Um, now, the thing about Agents of Oblivion, you can add extraterrestrial or horror elements to it. Uh, they are there. Or you can take them out and literally just run James Bond. This is, rather than being a sort of secret society, i.e. Agents of Gaia, this is far more you are a secret agent, James Bond, Jason Bourne style. But you can add horror elements. You can add um, uh, extraterrestrial elements. So you can do X-Files-ish stuff if you want. If, however, you really just want to do something like Mask or G.I. Joe um, sort of 80's cartoon idea of military Strike Force 7 uh, you are a sort of crack commando team with wickedly silly nicknames going up against a global terrorist unit and doing all kinds of fun this isn't to be taken itself seriously as if it's an actual unit this is very much as I say sort of mask or G.I. Joe it's it's a sort of 80s cartoonish version 
Um, but again, it was going for a good price, and I kind of like the, the the notion of having it. So yeah, I got it. Again, from uh, print my PDF, I got uh, this one, which is uh, Streets of Bedlam, which is again, it's another crime film noir style, uh, very much sort of uh, very much in the sort of vein of a sort of Tarantino or uh, Sin City sort of a feel. Um, again, I can add elements from this in Wellstone City and, and, and I've got a nice mix. Um, so that's it for settings. I have picked up a couple of other uh, Ultimate books. As I say, I've been very, very impressed by the work from uh, Mystical Throne. Um, one, they're sort of connected. One of them is this, which is the Ultimate Characters Guide. This is to provide s some extra oomph, uh, background templates, some extra ideas and widgets to make a more complete character for Savage Worlds. There are some people who feel that the Savage Worlds character creation system is sort of small, uh, doesn't really have enough oomph in it. I get that. Um, this adds this adds more flavour to a character, and I think it's worth having a look at because of that. Also added to that is this, which is Ultimate Character Guide Psionics. Now this has uh, a lot of potential. It goes into psionics, gives some new powers. Uh, this has potential for... You could use it for fantasy, you could certainly use it for horror. You could use it for modern espionage, for things like Agents of Oblivion. You could use it for sci-fi. Um, so there's a lot of potential for that. As I say, the only thing I'm missing that I've ordered is Achtung Cthulhu which is taking an age to appear at my friendly local gaming store but I am looking forward to getting a hold of it so that's me folks that's the list that's what I've got in my arsenal between the three of them now thank you very much for watching hope that didn't bore too much and I will see you all again with another video